Jack Penguin, and today I'm bringing you another LEGO Harry Potter review. So today I'm going to be reviewing set number 4842, Hogwarts Castle. This set includes 1,290 pieces and originally retailed for $129.99 in the US. This set came out back in September of 2010, and I finally got around to reviewing it since I did have this taken apart for quite a long time. You know, I've been using the parts for this within certain mocks and stuff, but you know, it's very nice to finally have rebuilt it. You know, I I forgot how much I really loved this set when it came out. You know, it's just, ama it's just an amazing set and you know, the box art also for this particular box as it being the only 2010-2011 Harry Potter wave box that I still own within my collection. I'm really happy that I still have that so then this review is a little bit more interesting otherwise of course there is a little bit of like shelf wear and damage to this particular box right here as you can see just like around the edges of the box are a little bit damaged but you know it's fine i'm really happy that i still actually have this otherwise like all boxes we have the lego harry potter logo right here in the corner we also have harry ron and hermione which these are the sort of Half-Blood Prince Deathly Hollows versions of their characters right there. Since this was released around the time of the Deathly Hollows releasing in theaters and also, you know, I'm really happy that they brought Harry Potter back around this time and I do own quite a couple of the sets. You can also check out some of those reviews down in the description below and I'm going to be working on getting some of those up around this particular time anyways. Otherwise, we do get our minifigure selection down here at the bottom, which we'll look at more closely later on within the video. And like I said before, you know, similar box are to the other 2010-2011 stuff with this sort of red background going on with your characters at the top, you know, it's just very nostalgic just seeing this box art, you know, it's probably one of my favorite box arts from the Harry Potter waves and everything, but we'll see what happens come 2020 if they do do any changes. Otherwise, let's take a look at the back. The very back of the box also features the Lego Harry Potter logo at the top set number. We also do get a better look at the inside of the castle right here, showing off all the play features with all the different rooms, which I'll talk more about when we actually get to looking at the castle. You know, there's a lot of really cool things going on. Also, one thing to note is that I might be missing a sticker or two within this particular set, but you know, that's fine. You know, either way, you know, this set is just very nicely done, and I'm really happy that Lego made it back in the day, otherwise that's pretty much all that I gotta say for the back of the box, keeping with that same sort of red background style with the tape and everything, and I really like that. The top of the box features the Lego Lego set number and then our characters all at the very top right there, which is very nice that they include that. Sides of the box don't really feature too much of anything special, you know, this one is of course the under back side of this particular side since I did have this box closed up like such. The other side features the Lego Harry Potter logo set number, name of the set in different languages, and also I still have the original tape on this side, which is pretty nice. Smaller picture of the set. And then, and then that does finally bring us to the very bottom with the Lego Harry Potter logo set number. Smaller picture of the set, Lego trademarks, Harry Potter trademarks and all that, and then the barcode for this particular set when it released. Otherwise, that's all that I gotta say for this particular box. You know, it's very nicely done by LEGO. So yeah, let's take a look at the overall model with the minifigures in front of it. Okay, so here is the final overall model for the Hogwarts Castle 2010 version right here, which overall, this set is beautiful, like I said, you know. It is a little bit small, some of these pieces, compared to some of the 2018-2019 set parts, you know. And it is a little bit bigger than some of the older ones, and it is a little bit smaller to, compared to some of the older ones as well, but you know, I, I just think that this was very well done for the time of its release. You do get quite a lot of very nice minifigures, you know, a lot of the main characters, which is very nice, you know, a lot of the really cool main teacher characters as well. You get Voldemort in this set, you know, who doesn't like Voldemort? And then we also do get two more Dementors, which those are sort of like the 2003-2004 versions of the Dementor characters, but you know, still it's very nice to see them within this particular set. Otherwise, before we get into looking at our minifigures, we do get our instructions for this particular set, 
which one thing to note is that these are a little bit old and wrinkled up since I did get these back in the day when I got the set, which we get a total of three instruction booklets. We have instruction booklet number one, which I did Sharpie on back in the day, and I did tape these all together since they were all three instruction booklets. Flipping all the way to the back, we just have a continue to book two right there and then a quick advertisement for Lego Harry Potter years one through four on the back, which is pretty nice. Very nice game, really enjoyed playing through that. We have the second instruction booklet, pretty much mimicking the box for all the fronts of these, you know, a little bit ripped on this particular one. Very back of this features a quick little Lego club advertisement. We have a advertisement for Lego Atlantis, which I think is a pretty crazy advertisement to have within a licensed sort of set right here. They don't do this typically anymore, put unlicensed uh, advertisements within licensed sets, but you know, it's pretty cool. Some of these sets right here, I actually think I might own um, a couple of these sets right here that are shown. We have a quick little Lego Harry Potter advertisement right there, very nice, for the 2010 wave, and then we can move forward. And then a quick advertisement for the Lego Harry Potter Hogwarts uh, Lego games set right there, which I also own that. Don't know if I'll ever review that really, you know, it doesn't really feel like something that I typically really need to record a video on. And then that's the end of book two. And then finally we have book three, which is the most sort of damaged out of the lot of these right here. Front of that, same as the others. We have the back with the win kid right there, which that's what they did back in the day. Very back features the play features for a couple pages right there, just showing off some of the features of what you can do within this particular set. We have the piece count for a total of two pages right there. We can keep moving forward. We have a better look at the interior of this particular set, just showing off all of the features there, which I'll get more in detail in a little bit. And then that does bring you to the final overall model for this particular set. No other advertisements than just those that were shown within the second instructions. Otherwise, that's pretty much all that I have to say for the instructions, so let's take a look at our minifigures in great detail. Taking a look at our first minifigure, we have Harry Potter inside his Gryffindor robes right here. Very nice minifigure to get, though he is not exclusive to this set. He also comes within seven other sets, counting this one. He does come with two accessories, one being this black broomstick with one of these cone pieces inside that silver color right there. Very interesting to see them add an accessory to the broomstick. I think that this is supposed to represent maybe his Nimbus. I don't really know, um, but I think that they do a better job representing the broomsticks within within the 2019 set which was the first task of the Triwizard Tournament which Harry had his firebolt within that particular set. I really liked how they did add the little details for that particular accessory but otherwise you know pretty nice just to show as just another accessory with his minifigure. Otherwise we do get a wand that being a brown stick piece just a regular sized stick piece in brown. We do get some plain black legs right there which this is the style of the Harry Potter outfits from back in 2010 20 2011. Very interesting style choice and then they did use this within the Harry Potter years 5 through 7 video game. We do get the Gryffindor torso print right there with the Gryffindor shield as well as the tie and all the red and yellow going on for his overall outfit. We do get some plain dark gray arms and then we do get some light flesh hands for the flesh tone. We do get some back printing on his minifigure, very nice. We do get a double sided facial expression which is also pretty cool to get with a very nice happy face on the front with his regular glasses and scar, can turn around his head, and then we have a very unhappy face on the back of his character right there. He can put on his hairpiece, same hairpiece that they've been using since 2001. Otherwise, that's pretty much all that I have to say for our minifigure of Harry Potter. The next minifigure that comes within the set is Hermione Granger, which just like Harry, this minifigure is not exclusive to the set and also comes within three other sets, counting this one. She also comes with the same accessory being a brown wand piece, that being a stick piece in brown. We do get the same sort of outfit design right here, which this is also a different type of printing style since I believe I got this from the magnet since I couldn't find my other Hermione minifigure. We do have the plain black legs right there and then the printing for the Gryffindor torso piece with the shield and all of that stuff like I mentioned before. We do get the same dark gray arms and then the light flesh hands for the flesh tone. Same printing on the back, just covered up a little bit by her hair piece. And then we do get another double-sided facial expression for Hermione. If you do take off her hair piece, you can see the first facial expression, can turn her head around, and then we have a unhappy facial expression 
on the back and then we are using that Hermione hair piece which was I guess regular for that particular time period just as a casual Hermione Granger minifigure. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I have to say for our minifigure of Hermione. The next minifigure that comes within the set is Professor Albus Dumbledore, which he also comes with a wand for his accessory inside this tan color. Very interesting, I guess that's to represent the Elder Wand. Otherwise, we do get some plain sand blue legs right there. Very interesting that they chose the sand blue for his outfit. We also do get some sand blue arms and then some light flesh hands for the flesh tone. I will take a better look at the torso printing on both the front and the back in a little bit. There's a look at the back of his character with the hair covering that up. Otherwise, he does come with an under the neck accessory being that beard inside that regular gray color. Very interesting. And then he does have the Dumbledore hair piece right there, which has been used since 2001. Otherwise, he does also have a double-sided facial expression, so let's take a look at the torso printing in detail. Okay, so here's a quick look at the torso printing for Albus Dumbledore. Here's a look at the front of it. And then you can take a look at the back. I really like the shine that they did add to this particular minifigure as well, even having like that hood going on on the back. Otherwise, if you were interested in seeing what his face looked like, we can take a look at that. We have double-sided facial expression one side without the glasses right there, and then another side on the back which features the glasses right there, which is also very nice to see that they did that, just like inside some of the newer and older Harry Potter waves. Otherwise, we can put on Dumbledore's beard like such, and then we can also show off how his face looks like with the glasses, with the beard, and everything. So here's a look at Dumbledore with the glasses, with his beard, very nice. And then you can turn his facial expression around to take a better look at the other side where he does have just the no glasses expression, which I think that, you know, both of these look very nice for Dumbledore. You know, I definitely really like that they did update him within the collectible minifigures line, and I really like how he turned out there. And we'll see if we do get any more Dumbledores based off like year six within the future of 2020. Looking at our next minifigure, here is Professor Minerva McGonagall right here, which she turned out very nice within this particular set. Compared to some of the 2018-2019 versions of her minifigure, she does have this skirt piece going on right here, which is one of those slope pieces if you do take her off like such. You know, I will have to put my hand there. You can see that that is one of those slope pieces with a print on the very front of it. No printing on the back of that. But otherwise, you can place her minifigure entirely right there. Here's a quick look at the torso printing. We only get front torso printing on our character, which, you know, it's fine since the back is covered up by this dark green cape, which is also pretty nice to get. We do get some dark green arms and then some light flesh hands for the flesh tone. We do get only one facial expression for her minifigure, which I think suits her character very well. And then we do get this dark green wizard's hat going on as well, which is pretty nice. You can also take that off to take a look. No back head printing right there, just another confirmation of that. Otherwise, that's pretty much all that I have to say for Professor McGonagall. She is exclusive to the set. The next minifigure within the set is Professor Severus Snape right here, which this is a very nice minifigure to get within this particular set. This was the first time that I actually got a Snape minifigure, which is also one of the reasons why I really like the design of his character. We do get one accessory being a black stick piece for a wand. We do get the black legs right there, some black arms, light flesh hands for the flesh tone. We do get the printing on both the front and then the back of the torso piece if you do take a look underneath the cape if you move that to the side there actually is no back printing i thought that there was back printing on this character but you know it's fine since there is a cape covering that up we do get only one facial expression for his character compared to some of the newer versions of snape which this definitely shows that come 2018 2019 and maybe even 2020 that Lego is going all out with the Harry Potter theme. You know, that's just another thing just to know right there. I do like the facial expression for this particular character though, very nicely done, using that same hair piece that they use within the Harry Potter video game right there, which is also very nice that they did continue to use come 2018. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I have to say for Snape. He is not exclusive to the set. He also comes within a magnet set as well, just like Dumbledore. Looking at our next minifigure, we have Professor Professor Flitwick, which this is a sort of newer version of Professor Flitwick right here compared to say the year one Philosopher's Stone version of Professor Flitwick, which I really like that they did include this one just to go along with the other characters. I did wish that they
that they did release a year one version of Professor Flitwick within the Harry Potter advent calendar last year in 2019, but maybe we'll have another go within 2020 or maybe even the collectible minifigures line if that exists. Otherwise, this was the first ever LEGO Harry Potter set to include a Professor Flitwick minifigure, otherwise he did later on come within, of course, the Harry Potter 2019 advent calendar as well as the LEGO Harry Potter 2018 collectible minifigures line. He does include the short legs for his character right there in plain black. We do get the same torso piece which is used for some of the Green Gods Goblins within the 2011 Diagon Alley set which is also pretty cool to see. We also do get one accessory being a brown wand just like a lot of the other characters, some plain black arms and some light flesh hands for the flesh tone. We do get no back printing on his character which is fine I guess you know. And then we do get this sort of wacky facial expression. I think that the facial expression is a little bit off. I think that the mustache is a little bit too big. I think that they did a better job with his facial expression come the 2018 version of his character and then also 2019 that's pretty much similar to this one but either way hairpiece is the Ron Weasley hairpiece that they used back in 2001 but inside that dark brown color which I think is a very interesting hairpiece used for his character but otherwise that's really all that I have to say he is exclusive to the set so that's very nice to get as well so yeah that's pretty much all for Professor Flitwick. The next minifigure that comes within the set is Argus Filch right here, which this minifigure is exclusive to the set, which is also pretty nice. He does come with a couple of different accessories, no wands since he is a squib. We do get one accessory being this little key, which is a very nice accessory to get. The other one comes within the castle somewhere. We also do get this little lamp piece right here, which is built out of three pieces, one of these tap pieces right there inside black and then a black stud on the bottom and then in the middle we get one of those cylinder pieces in trans yellow. Otherwise that's all for his accessories. I'm just going to remove this one just to make it easier to look at his overall character. We do get some very interesting leg printing which I think is very nice. We get these keys dangling from his belt which is printed on his belt piece. Some plain black legs otherwise you know very nice to see that they did try to add some leg printing right there makes it very interesting for his character. We do get some torso printing right there for the very front of his overall outfit. And then we do get some dark gray arms, light flesh hands for the flesh tone. We do get no back printing which is covered up by the hairpiece, same hairpiece being used by Dumbledore right there. You can put that right back on. No double sided facial expression, only the first one right there which definitely I think that the 2018 version of Filch definitely does a very great update to his character. The only thing that is different compared to the 2018 version is that this particular minifigure does get another accessory, that being Mrs. Norris, that comes within this particular set, which I'm really happy that they did include Mrs. Norris within the set. You know, it just, it's, it's a very nice companion sort of thing going on right there, which, you know, that would have been something that I would have liked to see within the Whomping Willow set, but otherwise it's fine. You know, I'm happy that I did get her within this particular set either way. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I have to say for Filch. The next minifigure that comes within the set is Lord Voldemort right here, which he also includes a wand being this white stick piece right here, sort of like his wand within the actual movies and stuff. We do get some plain black legs right there, and then we do get some torso printing, which there is another torso that has a little bit more like darker printing compared to this lighter printing that's on this torso piece right here, but I'll probably mention that within another video, but otherwise this minifigure is not exclusive to the set. He also comes within one other set set which I believe is the Forbidden Forest set that came out back in 2011. We also do get some plain black arms and some white hands for his flesh tone. We also do get a black cape for his character which is very nice to see. You can take a look underneath the cape. There is no back printing on his character right there. We do get only one head facial expression right here since he is technically a bald character. Very interesting facial expression for his character with a very nice happy smile going on right there or evil smile going on for his character, but otherwise very nice version of Lord Voldemort and also one of my first Lord Voldemort minifigures right here. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I have to say for Voldemort. Moving on to some of our last characters within this particular set, we have a Gryffindor Knight statue right here, which is very nice to see that they did include this. This, this is sort of like a reference, I guess, to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows when Professor McGonagall uses these to fight within the Battle of Hogwarts, since this does also connect to the Battle of Hogwarts set that I did 
actually record my video for a while back. You can check that out in the description below as well. Otherwise, this minifigure is pretty plain, nothing really too special going on with it. We do get one of these sword pieces right here, just a common small little knight sword going on right there. We do get some plain light gray legs and a plain light gray torso piece, only with some dark gray hands going on right there for his character. We do get a under the neck accessory being this armor plate right here with this silver tone to it going on front and back, very nice. No printing on that, we do get a plain black head for his character, and then we do get this knight helmet going on for his character overall as well. Very nice character to get, just another little accessory, and that does go within the castle just as a little build to go along with one of the rooms. So yeah, that's pretty much all for the Gryffindor Knight statue. And then finally, moving on to our Dementor characters, we get a total of two Dementors within this particular set. I'm only going to be showing one right now. I will show the other one when I do place it within the model. But otherwise, these all include these trans clear medium-sized dish pieces right here, which those are pretty nice to get for these particular characters just to represent that they're floating. These do also have the same similar design to the 2003-2004 versions of the Dementor characters, which is very nice, using that pogo stick right there going on for his character, which I'm just going to take him off right there, you can see how that works. And this is all in sight dark gray compared to the sand green that it was previously in. We also do get some curved arms right there for the character, and then the skeleton body inside that same dark gray color. We also do get the facial expression being the one facial expression inside that dark gray color. If you do take off the hood piece right there, you can take a better look at that with the facial expression going on. Very interesting. And then we do get this sort of black cape that does go on back both the front and the back of the character. Sorry that I keep dropping it. I was trying to have it in a good position, I guess, but it didn't really work in my favor. But there's a look at the front. And then there's a look at the back of the character, you know, very interesting cape style. I wish that they did continue to make them like this back inside 2018, you know, that would have worked very nicely compared to what we have like today. I, I guess that they sort of finalized that sort of build for the Dementor character, but you know, this is just nostalgic to me, I guess, you know, since I'm a huge Harry Potter fan and just been looking at these as like the Dementors, I guess, that they've been using for a long time. But otherwise, like I said, we get two of those and these are not exclusive to the set. You can also get one additional Dementor within the Battle for Hogwarts set, which I mentioned before. That also connects to this particular model. But otherwise, that's pretty much all that I have to say for the minifigures within this particular set. One side accessory that comes with your Harry Potter minifigure that I did forget to mention that came within this particular set is this silvery invisibility cloak right here. Very nice to see that we get one of those. You just plop that right over your minifigure. You know, it doesn't really work very well with the wand, so let's just move that away from your minifigure. You can place Harry down, and then you can plop this cloak right over his character. Compared to, say, the 2018 version that came within the collectible minifigures line, you know, this is a very interesting way, I guess, you know, you just gotta hold it down on your character. So there's Harry underneath the invisibility cloak, which, you know, doesn't really make him invisible. You know, it does make him look like he, do he doesn't really look like he's there, though, but, you know, it's, you can still see him through the cloak, you know, that's really the whole point with that. But compared to the 2018 one, like I said, you know, this is a very interesting concept and it works a lot better than having it be the under the neck accessory, at least in my opinion. But otherwise, you know, we do get this within one other set, that being the Hogwarts Express set from 2010 as well. So yeah, that's just one other thing that I did forget to mention that I wanted to show before we get into looking at the overall model. Okay, so here is the final overall model for the 2010 Hogwarts Castle, which right here, this is an amazingly done model in my opinion. It does use quite a couple of stickers throughout it, which, you know, it's fine. A lot of the other Harry Potter sets from both the past and the future do use quite a couple stickers just for some of the details. The color scheme of this one, just like a lot of the ones from years past, does use that tan sort of overall detailing right there with some dark gray mixed in and then we do have the sand green for the very tops of some of these towers. Compared to in the future of Harry Potter in 2018 and 2019 and so on, we do get dark gray instead of the sand green up here which you know, I think it's a little bit more accurate, you know, just over the years I've just seen it and it feels a lot more accurate and you know, having like all of them be 
that dark gray color, you know, I think it works out better. You know, it's just that this is one of those nostalgic colors that, you know, I, I'm just a fan of sand green in general. It's just something that I don't really have too much of and, you know, it looks nice. It's just some, it's a nice bright color to add to the Hogwarts castle right there. Otherwise, we're gonna go individually. I'm just gonna pan through these from the bottom over here all the way to the bottom over there and then we're gonna get into the interior details. So starting all the way over here, this is where we have Dumbledore's office behind there. We have the staircase that leads to that. Right here we have this sort of front door right here. We get two doors for this particular set, one of them being over here, the other one is on the other side of the Great Hall, which I think is pretty nicely placed, you know. It's fine, you know, this door doesn't really make sense to me, but it's fine. We do get a torch inside a little clip piece right there, you can see how that works, that's very nicely done. We do get some windows along the side over here, we do get that sand green for this sort of castle top going on. We get two stickers right here on those side pieces, which is very interesting. We also do get a printed piece right here, that being this printed 2x2 two two tile piece in light gray, which has, the gri which has the Hogwarts crest right there on it. There's a good look at that. That's a very nice piece to get. I believe that that also might come within one of the other Harry Potter sets, that being the LEGO Games 2010-2011 set right there. And then we do get the very top castle piece right here inside that sand green color. We also do get a bat, which is lingering all the way on the other side over there. But, you know, pretty nice build up right there with the main castle bit at the very top. You know, it's fine. You know, I like this Dumbledore's office a lot better than the 2019 version that comes within the Hogwarts Clock Tower set. You know, since this is way bigger and it does represent it a lot better. Otherwise, the 2002 version of Dumbledore's office is definitely a very interesting, at least, representation of it, but you know, that was released at the time that it was actually like something that you saw within Harry Potter. Moving on to the center piece right here, this is the Hogwarts Great Hall, which I did just fix a little something right here. I did have some of the cheese slopes placed wrong, so here's a look at that. You know, we still use that sand green for the very top of it. You know, just like I said before, the Great Hall that came out back in 2018 is way bigger and I feel is a lot more accurate since it does also feature all four of the Hogwarts house tables, though it isn't really represented size accurate either of these you know I think this is the best that Lego could have done and also this is a very nicely done play scene which we'll show when we look at the interior just like the other sets we do use the sort of tan coloring right here we do get the brown windows with no grates or any like window panes going on throughout these particular areas which you know it's okay you know I think that they definitely do a wonderful job displaying the outside with the 2018 version that's just something that I just want to say right away. Otherwise, like I said, that's connected by a clip piece, this little area right here, which uses three of these six by eight plate pieces in sand green, which is pretty nice to get. And then we also do have some more sort of castle toppers. Very interesting that they do keep them different, having a smaller one medium and then a bigger one in the middle. Otherwise, that does bring us to this next castle area, which before we do get into that, I do want to move this a little bit so then you can see these sides right here we do get that other door right here which comes off of the side of the great hall i think that that's a very nice placement since there actually is supposed to be a door there but i don't really like the sort of back table representation that they use for this particular set you know which is why i did want to make my own great hall back in the day and you know it shows that they are getting even more accurate with the 2018 and moving onwards harry potter sets Otherwise, we do get that sand green at the very top. We also do get some interesting sort of window colors right here being these one by one bricks inside both translucent blue and translucent orange. I think it's very interesting that they do use that on both sides right there. It's just a very interesting sort of like technique. I don't know if it's very accurate or not, but you know, it's pretty cool to see. We do then move on to these next two castle buildings right here. Moving on to this tall tower right here, which this is very interesting how this works. We do use a lot of stickers on this one. We get two right here at the bottom and then we move on. We have two more at the middle end and then we have two more at the very top. And then we have at the very top of that another one of those sand green castle toppers right here, which this one I also really like because it does represent sort of like more castle going on right up there. You know, it's sort of like a micro scale like feeling right there, but it technically isn't. You know, the outside is supposed to represent that 
Hogwarts is a big place, but then you also look at it that it is sort of minifigure scale when it shows that there are doors here. You know, I think that it's just very well done, but you know, it could have been done a little bit better. But either way, like I said, you know, this is one of those sets that I've, you know, this was one of my first Hogwarts castles, and I'm really happy with how it was for during its time of release. Also between all of these we do get these connecting areas right here which these are using these hinge pieces so then you can move these castles like such and then you can also do it through the other ends there are windows on all of these as I said before you know on all three sides which I think is very interesting on the very sides the middle and then on the other sides it's very interesting to show that. We do get one of the play features also showed there, which I'll talk more about in a little bit, which shows that clip piece. And then down here we have another interesting sort of connection area, which this is compared to the other two. The other two are the same, which I'll zoom out so then we can see them. We have this connection area right here, which is also used all the way over here, which is very interesting. And then we use a different one to connect the last two little buildings right here, which that one also has one of those window pieces right there, which it shows that this should be a bigger extension to Hogwarts. And also there is a way to connect this particular model to the 2011 Battle of Hogwarts set, which I did previously reviewed, like I said before. But you know, I think that LEGO's initial plan was to make more Hogwarts extensions throughout the years, but that didn't really pan out the way that they wanted. And then moving to the final tower, we have the sort of room of requirement and the astronomy tower going on over here, which, you know, it shows that they were thinking of all of the Harry Potter films when they did make these sets, which I think is very interesting. It's sort of like a general Harry Potter sort of theme feeling, you know, compared to what we are getting like right now, which is primarily like based on like particular themed of year one, year two, year three. We're now looking at this particular set, which features pretty much a variety from all of the films, which you'll see when I move on to the play features. We do get these black axes right here, which are on those hand, those serving hand pieces right there, which I think is very interesting. We do use those also within the Hogwarts Great Hall, within the actual play area within the castle. We also do get more windows, like I said before. Same color scheme, but we don't get any Hogwarts-like sort of castle topper right here. We only do get one of these telescopes, which I think is very nice that they put one of those within within the astronomy tower. It just makes sense, in my opinion, you know. Like I keep saying, it isn't completely accurate, at least to the films or anything, but, you know, I guess it's just for show. Otherwise, it does bring us to the sides of these, you know, I'm gonna zoom us out and we can take a look at the sides. So, moving this all around over here, like I said before, these all are interconnected with each other using some different Technic functions. So, looking at the very sides of these, there's a quick look at the sides from this angle right here. You can see the insides of these rooms a little bit better. You can also see that we do get the windows on the side over here and a better look at the side of the Great Hall. We're gonna take a look at the other side. Looking at the other side, you can see within Dumbledore's office as well as down here where some of the other play features are with the door being on the very front where Dumbledore's office is. You can also see that if you move that, you can see some of the other sides of the Great Hall, which this one also does move out since we also don't have the door going on over here. So we have a different sort of side look compared to the other side right there, which I think is very nice. And then you can also move into here, which, you know, this does bring us into the play features within all of these individual rooms. So let's take a look and see what we have going on within this particular castle. Starting off, just like I showed an overall layout of all of the outside looks, we're gonna take an overall look at all of the inside looks right here, which there are some things missing, like our minifigures, which I can scatter throughout this particular model since they do fit in quite well. We do have a lot of stickers also to look through, as well as some other printed pieces, which I think are very nice to see within this particular set. But otherwise, we're gonna start all the way down here in this corner since, you know, I started on the other end when it came to looking at the outside of the model, but we're gonna take a look at it 
room right here, which we're gonna get on a more lower ground for this. Okay, so starting off over here, we do get some more torches right here using that same sort of telescope piece with these little flames right here, which is pretty nice. And then one of the cooler things within this particular set, at least in my opinion, is that we do get the vanishing cabinet, which that you of course cannot take off right here. You know, it's just there for show. This is supposed to represent a piece of the room of requirement, which I think is very interesting. This is part of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. We do get another one of this same exact build within Borgen and Burks, which comes within the Diagon Alley set, which I will be reviewing that sometime in the future of this particular year, so look forward to that. But otherwise, you can open this up like such. It's using the same hinge pieces that we use for the connections for this overall castle. You can see that we have a place for you to place a minifigure if you want. So like I'm just gonna, for example, put Harry. He's not too happy to be going in here, so we're just gonna toss him right there within this particular build and then you can close it up like such and Harry's within the cupboard and then he can escape to the Morgan and Burke's cupboard if you want to but otherwise that's a very interesting at least play feature in my opinion that Lego put in here you know it's very nice that they are showing a little bit of love to the Half-Blood Prince since we haven't really gotten too many sets based off the later Harry Potter films other than the ones that came out in 2010 and 2011 so it should be interesting to see what happens within 2020 moving onwards but otherwise, that's the Vanishing Cabinet. Very nicely done. You know, we'll see if they redo that within the future of the Lego Harry Potter theme. Otherwise, moving up, we have another sort of area going on over here, which this is supposed to represent the restricted section of the library. I think it's very interestingly done right here. We do get some books behind this sort of glass area. We also do get a key, which Filch also comes with the other key that comes within this particular set. So, you know, he has the other key in order to unlock the restricted section. We also do have these handcuff pieces, which I think is a very interesting like decision by Lego. In order to open this, you do have to take those off and then you can move these aside to get the books that you want. Those books do work like normal books. They're the old style books, you know, they're not like the new ones that are two or three pieces that you can place a tile piece in. These are the older style. You can put a tile piece in these if you want, but you know, I don't really recommend it. And these are very easy to at least break if you can see that some of them do have some white lines going on right there since they are rather old. But otherwise, that's the only play feature you can move these out to get the books that you want. You know, very interesting that they did include that. Otherwise, that does bring us all the way to the very top with the astronomy tower right here, which I'm going to zoom in. We do get this telescope, which, you know, it's a very interesting build. It's using one of those other types of clip pieces down here. You can move that up and down. And then you can also move this sort of gun-like thing to side to side. You know, I just think it's a very interesting build. We do get a lever at the very end. I don't know why they include that. I guess it's just for, like, easy positioning if you want to have your minifigure holding on to that. You know, you have a clear bit at the very top if you're looking down through there to see what's going on within the world. You know, I think it's a very interesting, at least, inclusion. You know, we haven't really gotten any, like, astronomy-related stuff within the LEGO Harry Potter theme before this, so, you know, it's very nice to see that they did include it. Otherwise, we do have the regular cone pieces within that sand green color, and then moving down, we just have scabbers hanging up here, which, you know, why not just have a rat going on right there, one of the older style rats with no printing, before the 2018 did bring us a new rat mold. Otherwise, that's all for this particular castle right there. We're going to take a look at the next area, which should start with the Slytherin common room. Taking a look at the Slytherin common room, we do get a somewhat similar feeling to the Gryffindor common room, which is two floors above right there. We do get a sort of little table going on right here, which is which is all within this green color. We do get some accessories. We get one of these printed pieces for the Quibbler, one of these one one of these two by two tile pieces in light gray, the Quibbler, Harry Potter speaks out at last right here. Very nice that they do give that reference within this particular set. One of the couple um, printed pieces within these 2010, 2011 aged Harry Potter sets. We also do get two of these seats in black right here, which those can rotate. They're on one of those spinny pieces right there. We do get a sticker all the way in the back, which is a Slytherin sign right there, which you can barely see that's on a 
two by two tile piece right there inside green. And then we also do have two of these snakes right here on these clip pieces. And then we also do get one of those goblet pieces within that trans clear color. Otherwise, we also do have a little torch in the back. You know, that doesn't really help with light though, but you know, that's really all that I have going on right here. We don't really have any Slytherin students within this particular set to place in here, but if you do own the Hogwarts Express set, then you will have Malfoy within his Hogwarts uniform. You can place him within the Slytherin common room. Same with Crab slash Goyle, whoever's within that other Battle of Hogwarts set. Otherwise, that does bring us to the next floor right here, which this is where the statue goes, which if you remember, I did show off this minifigure of the statue of Gryffindor. You can place that character right here on these 1x2 jumper plates in brown. You can just place it like such. We also do have one of those older types of spiders hanging around, which they did replace those with a new mold inside the 2018 Harry Potter sets, which right here you have the statue right here on this particular area. If you do flip this around, it will reveal a black book, which this is supposed to represent one of the Hallcruxes, which is Tom Riddle's diary, which they actually did make a new printed version within the Harry Potter CMF back in 2018. You can open this up, there is nothing inside it. You can actually put a Dobby sock within there. I don't know if it's supposed to be within the set that you can put one of those in there, but I know that they do have that within the Dobby's release from 2010, which that's something that I still got to review. I might buy a new one of those since I do have to get a new 2010 Dobby, but otherwise that's on one of these spinny plates, one of the larger ones, and then you can flip that around, you have your main sort of guy going on right there. Otherwise that does bring us up to the next floor, which this is the Gryffindor common room, which one thing you might see is that I am missing one of these stickers right here. We are supposed to have a Gryffindor sort of logo going on on that flag, which you know, I might have misplaced the sticker for that, you know, it's fine. It's just something that I gotta eventually replace. We do get our next printed 2x2 two two tile piece inside tan right here. We have the Marauders map, which I think is very nice. I hope that they do eventually make one of these for the future of the LEGO Harry Potter sets in 2018, 2019, 2020, moving onwards. But you know, it's very nice, you know, hopefully that would be a at least 2x3 tile piece, you know, that would make a lot more sense than that. We also do get a trans clear goblet. We also have the seats going on right here, which these are on those spinny plates right there, but these are inside red, very nice. And then we have the very interesting play feature, which I am gonna try and get our best look at it in one second. So if you remember, I did show that we had one of those clip pieces on the very back of this particular set, which that is to show that within the fireplace, you know, this is what it's supposed to look like. If you bring it forward, we have another sticker right here on one of those 2x2 two two red tile pieces right there, which has Sirius's face, you know. At first, I thought that they were going to make a Sirius Black minifigure with this, which I was really excited, but that never happened within that particular wave, which was why, I'm which was why I was very excited when the Expecto Patronum set did have a Sirius Black minifigure, since I've been wanting one for, like, a long time. So, you know, that's a really cool play feature going on right there. You just gotta pull this in so then it's just out of the way, or you can pull it out if you want to have Harry talk in a serious. And, you know, I would have liked to see maybe a bigger spot for that, you know, so then you can have Harry, Ron, and Hermione, though only Harry and Hermione do come within this particular set. You can place them within those seats if you so desire. Otherwise, that's all for the fireplace right there within the Gryffindor common room. Pretty nice to get that within this particular set. Otherwise, we don't get any other common rooms for any of the other houses, but you know, I really hope that we do see more of the house diversity that we've been seeing as of 2018 in the future of the LEGO Harry Potter sets. You know, it's just something that I'm really happy that they're starting to expand and show some of the characters that they've never shown before and everything, which, you know, it's just something I'm really happy about that they're doing. Otherwise, at the very top right here where we have our main sort of castle piece going on, we have the Owlry right here, which is pretty nice. We have three different owls going on right here, which hopefully I did select the 2010 versions and not the newer versions right here. We have a brown owl, we have a dark gray owl, and then we have Hedwig right there, the snowy white. Otherwise, we also have some of these studs right here to represent some owl droppings, which I hope that they do eventually use the poop piece in white for that, 
within the future of Harry Potter sets since I do know that that exists within a bunch of the Disney Princess Wave sets as of 2020 so I mean that's just something crazy or you can go on Legos Bricks and Pieces and buy 200 of them for $12 which yeah I, I know it's a little crazy but otherwise that's all for the Owlry we have a back look at this particular section you know nothing really too special I wish that they did start reusing these again within the Harry Potter theme it's just something that I do miss it's very nice that they did make that specific mold for it back in 2001 otherwise that is all for that particular section of the castle so let's take a look at the Great Hall. Taking a look at the bottom floor level of the Great Hall right here, you know, I think that it could be bigger. You know, I did try to expand it up from this particular area. We only do get two tables compared to four, which, you know, is something that I would have liked to see. We only do also get the two flags, one for Gryffindor and one for Slytherin right there. Would have liked to see something for Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw, but you know, LEGO does deliver come 2018 to give you full house unity right there, which I think is amazing. But otherwise, those are stickers on these big flag pieces. We have one for Gryffindor and one for Slytherin, one in green and one in red. Also at the very top, we do get this little chandelier going on, which that you can spin if you want. You know, it has these candles, which are represented by these cone pieces inside white with a little translucent orange stud on the very top. Otherwise, I think that they do represent those better within the other Great Hall. You know, having the new torch piece definitely helps. And then when it comes to the interior of this, you know, like I said, we only do get the two tables. We don't get the back table for the teachers, which is something that I would have liked to see. We get this main podium right here, which doesn't really accurately depict it very well. You know, I do like that we do get these torch bracket pieces right there. You know, those are pretty nice. We get some more of those axes right there in the very back, which are connected by those clip pieces. You do get a good look with the windows and everything going on right there. And then we have two brick built seats for the other two teachers that come within this particular set, which technically you can put Dumbledore and then Snape within those seats right there, and then McGonagall is supposed to be in the middle since she does have the skirt piece. Otherwise, you can also place your minifigures down here on these little benches right here with all these little goodies, which, you know, one thing that I do like about this set is that it does include a lot more food than compared to the Great Hall from 2018. I think that they did a wonderful job with that representing that we have this large cake going on right here on this side of the table, which I guess it's supposed to go with the houses, Gryffindor and then Slytherin. Also, we do get a number of these goblets within this golden color. I think it's pretty crazy to get a bunch of those. We have one of these chicken pieces, you know, pretty common sort of food pieces. And then we do, and then we do get a golden plate all the way back here. If I do take that off, that's on top of one of those cylinder pieces in red. You can see that we have a crescent roll and then we have two different types of those grape pieces right there. We have some lime green grapes and then we also have the red cherries right there. But otherwise, pretty nice to see that they are giving you a lot of food within this particular set. Like I said before, we do have the door off of the side. We also have those translucent brick pieces going up over here and also on the other side if I do move to show you that, you can see that. But otherwise, I think that, you know, it's okay for the time that it was. You know, I, I would have liked to see more you know, it's just something that I'm thinking right now since I'm so used to seeing all of the all of the effort that they've been putting in a lot of the Harry Potter sets as of nowadays, which hopefully that does continue within 2020, which there will be a lot of very interesting sets to look at. But otherwise, let's look at the last section of the castle. The last section of the castle right here is leading up to Dumbledore's office. We have this little stairway down here, which, you know, we use these stairs within this dark gray color, which I think is very interesting. You can fold those up like such if you just want them to be out of the way. We also have two of these wall element pieces, these one by twos right here, which also have some stickers of some other like headmasters, I guess, right here. You know, it's very interesting to see those. But otherwise, within here, we do have some other little sort of references, which I think is pretty cool. You know, just to get in here a little deeper, let's take a look. We have a little sort of trophy room going on over here, which I think is nice. We have Seeker James Potter. I really think that that's crazy that they put that as a reference. It's like very interesting that they did that. And then we also do have two other cups right there. I wonder if one of them is for TM Riddle, but otherwise that's a really cool reference just to see within this particular set. Otherwise, moving those stairs back to where they're supposed to be, we have a treasure chest over here. If we take a look down here, I'm just gonna take that off 
since it's probably better to look at right away over here. So inside here we get the Philosopher's Stone, at least that's what I'm guessing it is. We get one of those stone pieces in red, and then we also do get this sort of dragon manuscript thing going on right here, which is very interesting. Otherwise, very nice printed piece, just very interesting to see that within this particular set. Behind the stairs, of course, we do get the door, which I showed within the beginning of the video, and then that does bring us all the way up here to Dumbledore's office. So zooming out, we do get a lot of things going on over here. We do get another one of those printed pieces being a Daily Prophet right there with an Azkaban escape going on, which I also think it's very interesting that we do get a magnifying glass going on top of that. We have another sort of thing going on over here. I don't really know what that's supposed to be. It can't be the pensive. It can't be a prophecy of any type. I just, I, I don't know what it is. It's just something hanging out right there, which that is Dumbledore's desk and then his overly oversized seat behind the desk, which I think it's crazy that they made it that big. I don't know why they made it that big, but I guess it fits him perfectly since his hair does have to have an extra stud width going on right there. We do have some various cabinets and everything going on with some potions. We have some storage things going on, so if you do take this top piece off right here, you can take that away. We have a letter within there, one of those printed one by two letter pieces right there, which you've seen before. You know, we have some potions going on over here, some different translucent clear pieces going on right there. You know, you can place that right back on top of those two studs. Very interesting that they do just hide that like such. And then we also have another one of those on this side right here. So if you do take that bit off, I don't know if there's anything under here, which I did break it a little bit. Is there anything in here? We have a basilisk fang right there, which is very nice. I guess that's used to break open one of the hull cruxes since this was at least released around the time that that was a thing within the movies, which then that does bring us all the way up to the top, which we have some really cool references right here. We have the Sword of Gryffindor, which I think is very nice represented by that sort of silver sword color right there, which that does chip a little bit, which is why, you know, they don't make those types of weapons anymore, like the lightsaber handles and stuff. And then we also do have the Sorting Hat, which is very nice to see, which this is the original sort of sorting hat that they had within the 2010 set. We do get some printing on the very front of this brown hat, and now this is replaced by a new mold come 2018, 2019. So yeah, that's pretty much all for that. That's just on the very top right there, just hiding at the very top. We have a little bat, like I mentioned before, and then just the other little details to represent the very top of this particular castle. So overall, you know, very nice set, I'm really happy with the interior, so let's just place our minifigures and then I'll say my overall final thoughts. So overall, this is a pretty great playset. You do get a lot of your main characters. You get Harry and Hermione, you know, it's a little disappointing that you don't get Ron, but he does come within his Gryffindor outfit within the Hagrid's Hut set, which I also have a review for. You can check that out as well. You do get a lot of your main teachers. You get Dumbledore, you get Professor Snape right there, you get Professor McGonagall, and you get Professor Flitwick for the very first time, as well as you do get Mr. Filch for the very first time as well. And it's also a very nice, way to get Voldemort right there, though he does come within some of the other sets, and then you also do get two of those Dementors hanging out as well. Is it a great representation of all of the Hogwarts houses? Definitely not. You only get some flags for both Gryffindor and Slytherin. The only full house-like representation that we get is on the very front of this building with a printed 2x2 two -two tile piece showing off all of the houses on a crest. But, you know, overall the size of some of these buildings, you know, I think that the Great Hall should have been bigger, you know, they did a wonderful job with the 2018 version, but, you know, this one, you know, it's fine for what it is, you know, it, I just wish that it could have been better. You only get the Gryffindor and Slytherin common rooms, which I would have liked to see some more of the other houses, which, you know, it's fine. You get the Vanishing Cabinet, which, you know, also comes within the Borgen and Burke set, which, you know, I, I like that. That's amazing. You know, the size of Dumbledore's office is great. You get the Astronomy Tower, you get the Restricted Section, you get the Owlry right there. You know, I think that this set has a lot to offer, you know, and for like $130 that it originally retailed back in the day, you know, it was a wonderful deal, at least in my opinion. And as a huge Harry Potter fan, this is just one of my favorite sets that I own within my collection. But otherwise, leave your thoughts down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this particular set. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? You know, tell me in the comment section below. 
Otherwise, remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon new every time I upload a new video. So yeah, that's it for now, and I will see you next time. Bye! <laughs>